Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. Dear respected ulama al-ikram, loved elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, we welcome you to yet another exciting episode uh, of our edition of the fifth year of marriage series. We are presenting to you these episodes in this series uh, right from here, the Islamic University in Uganda, Kampala campus. So we thank all our partners and stakeholders who have been part of us in this uh, journey. We would like also uh, uh, to thank the brothers and sisters who are online to make it a point uh, to be with us in these lectures. In tonight's lecture, we want to begin from where we ended last time. We, as, as I always say when uh, the program is beginning, that we have been running this series uh, since the inception. We looked at uh, various aspects <coughs> and at this moment we are trying to look at how we manage marital disputes. Last uh, week in the last, ep uh, the introductory bit of this episode of uh, managing marital disputes, Dr. Abdul Hafiz took us through the appreciation that these disputes always exist. <coughs> but then how do we manage them from the masculine perspective? Uh, call it from the male side of it. How does a man handle these disputes within the uh, jurisprudence of Islam? Dr. Abdul Hafiz al is the director of Sharia at the office of the Supreme Muft. He's also uh, the head of department of Sharia at the faculty of uh, Islamic studies and Arabic language here at the Islamic University in Uganda. He has uh, researched vastly in various aspects, including aspects of our deen, aspects of human rights, <coughs> and also other contemporary issues. We pray Allah Jalla Jalalu uh, to reward him for the time he gives us and we should also benefit uh, from uh, the lectures that he gives us. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Islam, I would not like us to take more time because we need from the doctor. As you are hearing from the background, these are echoes of his voice every time these days is... <coughs> But we are okay with this. Uh, this is as a result of his uh, numerous engagements. And we shall recommend to him to sa take some holiday. I don't know whether he knows places like Hawaii, where he could go and get uh, new atmospheres uh, and it becomes better than how he is. But we all in all, we thank Allah Jalla Jalalu for the gift of this time and we pray to Allah Jalla Jalalu to enable us achieve from what he's going to tell us. You will uh, bear with us, his voice is not okay. So somewhere, somehow, he will be clearing his throat. I know somebody might tell me that I should have brought the kofters, but his voice is not for kofters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable him to take us through this. Dr. Afiz, in the last lecture, we, you introduced us to the inevitability of uh, marital disputes. You went ahead and discussed for us the aspects that are surrounding it. And we, we thought that as a husband, as a masculine figure in the home, still Islam has guided me on how to handle such disputes. We welcome you now to come and give us uh, uh, a detailed discussion on the same. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Thumma salatu wa salam Al-Atamani al-Akmalan Ala Rasulina wa Mawlana Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in I want to join my moderator To thank the Almighty Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala For having enabled us to make it to yet another episode <coughs> in our series, The Fiqh of Marriage. <coughs> Today, inshallah ta'ala, as part of the continuity, we are going to look at 
the <clears throat> husband's approach to the management of the marital conflict. <clears throat> I also want to agree with him on the statement that we made that conflicts in families are inevitable. There is no way we can live as human beings without these conflicts. <coughs> and uh, that's why our major objective, our major focus, our major emphasis is on how do we manage them. Conflicts shall always be there. But the difference is in the approaches that we take in order to address them. The difference <clears throat> is in keeping those conflicts within a minor magnitude so that they don't escalate to an extent of leading to dissolution of marriage, which is the greatest institution of uh, human beings. <coughs> Today, inshallah ta'ala, we are looking at the husband's approach. We are dedicating our focus today on the side of the husband. That is, if there is dispute in the family, how is the husband supposed to address them? And of course, <coughs> when we look at the side of the husband, it means that the wife who is going to be the recipient of this approach should also be taking note so that you know whether your husband is compliant or he has gone against the rules of uh, the Sharia. I wanted to start with this introduction <coughs> as we look at the husband's approach. <coughs> The first point is, as Muslims, whenever we are and wherever we are, we should actually be so much happy and we should uh, be so much grateful <coughs> to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having made us Muslims, for having chosen for us the religion of Islam. <coughs> the reason why I'm making this statement in my introduction is just imagine the many verses of the Quran the many traditions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he talks about the beauty of marriage <coughs> the advantages of marriage the significance and the many great benefits that we can find in this institution of marriage but in this case, Allah, the all-knower, <coughs> Allah, who has the knowledge of each and everything, also knew that, like any other institution, <coughs> marriage is not exceptional from suffering from some setbacks, from suffering some slacks, in the language of project management. <clears throat> Along the way, the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that the happiness of marriage shall find some kind of challenges. So having known that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for us an approach. And the beauty with Islam is that we all agree that Allah cannot choose for us except he chooses for us what is best. You all know <coughs> the traditions or the ayat of the Quran. Allah is our creator. Being our creator, he knows us. He actually knows what works for us and what doesn't work for us. So we are so proud as Muslims that it is our creator who chose for us the best approach in case we have some marital challenges 
How do we manage them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah ya'alamu man khalaqa wa huwa al-latiful khadir. Do you think that the one who created you actually is not aware of uh, what is more beneficial to you? So the task is ours. Either to choose the approach that Allah has chosen for us or to choose any other approach. <clears throat> but when you choose to have another approach, whatever regrets that will come with them, you should be ready for them. You know that common verse in Quran whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ Any person who chooses a system, a path, rather than the path that was prescribed by Islam in Quran, in Sunnah, one, فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ Allah shall not accept it from him. Not only that, but at the end, it shall be among the losers. <clears throat> so as Muslims, as I prepare you to enter into this topic, both on the side of the husband and on the side of the wife, we should open our minds to accept it simply because this is what our Creator chose for us. <laughs> on the side of the husband, it is even so great that Allah chose for us that approach. <clears throat> that approach was laid down in Surah An-Nisa. That is chapter 4, verse 34. Allah says, Ar-Rijalu qawwamuna ala nisa That men are the protectors, men are the superiors, men are the leaders, are the ones who should take care of the affairs of women. <coughs> Why? Because of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given men that he didn't give a woman. And because of the responsibility of provision, we all know that the responsibility of provision was put on the shoulders of the husband. <coughs> then the verse continues. Along the way, the verse mentions that walati tahafuna nushuzahun. This is where the this is where we should start from as we talk about <coughs> the husband's approach. Allah says, and to those women on whose part you fear disobedience, <coughs> you fear disloyalty or ill conduct. What does Allah advise? He says, Fa'iduhun. Start by admonishing them. Give them a talk. <coughs> Interact with them. Wahjuruhunna fil If that one does not work, then you can refuse or you can separate the beds with them. If that one does not work out, I know there is a controversy when it comes to beating. Because the Quran says, and beat them. And inshallah, when we reach that particular moment, we shall expound it, we shall explain it, so that we can refute all the misconceptions about Islam on this particular aspect. Then Allah says, فَإِنْ أَطَعَنَكُمْ When these women, when your wives return to loyalty, return to obedience, فَلَا تَبْغُوا عَلَيْهِنَّ سَبِيلًا Then don't seek any other means of annoying them. Don't annoy them. <coughs> don't go against, don't do anything against them. Why? إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلِيًّا كَبِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most high, is the greatest above all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a brief verse 
which lays down the husband's approach to the management of the conflict. <coughs> I want to take you in a gradual process by understanding the deep meaning of this verse. What do we learn from this verse? First of all, the verse starts by confirming الرجال قوامون على النساء. The verse starts by confirming the superior role that is played by the husband in the family. And that superior role is a role of leadership. Is a role of leadership. <coughs> Let it be known to men. Let it be known to husbands that there is no any difference in terms of grades, in terms of levels, in terms of degrees between a husband and a wife <coughs> except one degree. That degree is the degree of leadership. That's all. <coughs> the rest of the things, we are at the same equal footing. You remember in our previous discussion, <coughs> Allah has prescribed roles for the wife and roles for the husband. Having said that, Allah said, وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Allah says, and wives or women <coughs> shall have rights similar to the rights against them. That is against them, that is the obligations or the duties of their husbands. Bil ma'roof, according to what is equitable, then Allah confirms, and this should be heard very clearly by our wives. Allah said, walil rijali alayhinna daraja. Our wives should know that men or husbands, they have a degree of advantage over them. That is what I wanted to stress. That before we go into the approach that the man should use in order to resolve the conflict, the man should appreciate the fact that you are a leader. As a leader in any institution, when there is any deviation, <coughs> you always seek the best approaches for resolving <coughs> that conflict. So, I want also to emphasize that there is no that kind of superiority, arrogance, among others, over the wife by the husband. Allah says, وَلِلْرِجَالِ عَلَيْهِنَّ daraja. We are the same. Sorry, we are not the same. We are at the equal footing. But Allah has given men a certain degree above. Those who understand the Quran more than that, better than us, they say, that is the degree of leadership. <coughs> Once we understand that this is the degree of leadership, this is what confirms upon you that superiority. This also emphasizes that as long as there is no clear leadership in the family, there shall always be some kind of conflict. So both the wife and the husband should accept that there must be leadership. And that leadership, according to Quran, it was given to the husband. Number two, <coughs> The verse ends with a statement which says, Inna Allah kana aliyan kabira. After Allah giving you the guidance on the disciplinary action, <coughs> the approach to the management of the conflict, Allah says, you as the husband who is in charge of managing this conflict, don't forget that Allah is the most high, is the greatest above all. What does it mean? As you are managing the conflict, avoid abuse of authority. <coughs> avoid abuse of authority. Because 
We have seen situations whereby our leaders actually, they exercise their authorities excessively. So Allah is reminding us in the same verse <clears throat> that I have conferred upon you the leadership and therefore you manage this conflict with your hand. But don't abuse that authority because I am above. I am watching. Should you do it in such a way that you are abusing it, know that at the top of that or above that, there is Allah who can actually revenge. That is something that we need to understand. <coughs> in fact, that's why even in another verse, Allah says, Wallahu azizun hakim. Allah is the exalted in power. Allah is the wise one. So that is the first lesson that we pick in the same verse that is giving us authority to manage conflicts as uh, husbands. <coughs> Number two, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us that authority, it is like Quran is counseling, is dismantling all kinds of arrogance, all kinds of pride, <coughs> especially the one which comes due to the difference in socio-economic differences. You know that many of the conflicts which come or which are actually affecting our marital relationships are because of unnecessary arrogance. You find out, for instance, that one party is coming from a certain noble family and from time and again, the husband is reminding the wife as you were not even, I was not supposed to marry a woman like you. That is unnecessary arrogance and taking pride in something that actually does not have a lot of weight. <clears throat> then you find out that you were not even compatible. The question is, where were you to choose me if I was not compatible? You know, I didn't know I would have taken a better choice. Was there any rush? You had all the chance, you had all the opportunity. <coughs> Statements like, I just helped to marry from your family, subhanAllah. Such statements that are degrading the other party, they are contributing to a lot of conflict in the family. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum. <coughs> So that very verse is warning us against arrogance, against taking pride, in, especially in material things. In some situations, the wife is working, especially she's doing a corporate job, and the husband is doing some casual, these menial jobs, the juakaris. <coughs> and the woman is taking that as a source of pride in order to undermine and to despise the husband. So when Allah says, Ar-Rijalu qawwamuna ala nisa and when he says that, walahunna mithlu alladhi alayhinna bil ma'roof, it is a clear message that, please, do away with your arrogance, do away with your pride. Let us meet in this institution as husband and wife who are trying to comfort each other to mitigate each, uh, the, the, the weaknesses of each other among other issues. Okay, you know that when we are to talk about this issue of arrogance, we can have a lot of discussion about it, but that is yet another lesson that we learn out of this verse before we could even go to <coughs> the approach. Number three, can you imagine that the duties and obligations we are joined in the same verse with the approach to conflict resolution. There is also a certain hikmah there. The same verse that prescribes the duties and obligations, <coughs> it is the same verse which prescribes the approach to conflict management. What does it mean? To me it suggests that among the major causes of marital disputes, it is either ignorance of these duties, <coughs> that many people are ignorant about them, 
And by the way, this is one of the primary causes because these duties, these obligations are meant to ensure harmony, to ensure accountability for a particular assignment, among others. So the verse is like reminding us that if you ignore these obligations, if you ignore these duties, what next is going to be conflict? <coughs> Number two is neglect of responsibilities. And this is even worse. We know some partners are aware of their obligations and duties. But adamantly they choose to neglect them. They choose to ignore them. <coughs> they say, what can you do? So if that is your language, what can you do? Then it means you are just facilitating room for conflict. <coughs> we are living in the relationship whereby some husbands have deserted their homes. Then after that you talk about conflict. Husbands have left their wives without the basic necessities. We are receiving cases whereby the husband or a man married a woman and then he rented for her for some months and even the woman doesn't know actually what happened but she just felt that the husband abandoned her the landlord is remaining rent rent and the husband is nowhere to be seen so what do you expect in such a situation <coughs> some husbands have chosen their homes that they just come to sleep what has happened about the feeding of the family members that is not his business at all <coughs> on this issue I must, I must emphasize that there is a lot of preaching what we are actually not practicing and you know the caution ya ayuha alladhina amanu lima taquluna ma la tafalun it is so sad that you know what you are supposed to do but you choose not to do it Actually, between knowledge and practice is a big gap. And that's why this verse, when it joins between duties and the approach to conflict management, you should know that that is the meeting line between the two. <coughs> By the way, one scholar said that ignorance of the duties is better than knowing them without practicing them. I rather listen to someone saying that, Wallahi Sheikh, I didn't know that that was my obligation. That one I can give a benefit of doubt. Because he just need to be educated, then he goes ahead. Rather than someone who says, I know. I know. Then after knowledge, what is it? Knowing something and you ignore practicing it, Actually, this is going to become an evidence against you. Because you knew. And when you knew, you just chose not to practice. Another issue, as we are still trying to create the way towards the approach of the husband. <coughs> this verse mentions, Allah says, Wallati takhafuna nushuzahun. There is something that I would like to draw attention of the audience on. The verse says, And those of your women whom you fear disloyalty, you fear disobedience, <coughs> you fear non-compliance, that very spot in the verse should also teach us something. What is it? Whenever there is a misunderstanding, Whenever there is a dispute among the partners, let us look for a disobedience to Allah. Leave others aside. Whenever there is a conflict, our focus is on <coughs> how have I disobeyed Allah? Because some of the issues that <coughs> you are actually charging the wife of not doing, it is actually 
not part of the disobedience. So our focus should be there. <coughs> Maybe I should also quickly add that when we talk about disobedience, we are within the limits of Islam. Just today, this evening, someone was asking me about how can I manage conflict with my wife who has deserted Islam? You know, at first <coughs> she was a non-Muslim. Then she converted to Islam. Now because of some misunderstandings, she had now gone back to her original religion. We have no place for such. We have no place for such a person who is just, you know, more of a hypocrite. Today is a Muslim, tomorrow she's not. Whatever advice that we are going to talk about, we are handling the society of Muslims. So in such a situation, it's about the disobedience of Allah. <coughs> and therefore, should there be any misunderstanding, please, the husband and wife, your focus should be, how have we disobeyed Allah? That one shall also help us to resolve or to manage this conflict in the best way. Why are we saying that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ Allah was not to punish them so long as you as the prophet, you are still among them. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ And Allah was not to punish them while they are still seeking the istighfar, <coughs> seeking for forgiveness, seeking Allah's protection. This verse was interpreted by some scholars that as long as Islam is practiced among the married partners within the Islamic society, they shall be exposed to less problems. <coughs> so whenever we are having misunderstandings, our focus should be how have we disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another implication of that it is that any kind of disobedience, any kind of non-compliance <coughs> should be measured on the scale of non-fulfillment of the duties and obligations. If you are charging your wife that you, have, you, you are disobedient, you are non-compliant, you must do that vis-a-vis -vis the scale of uh, the expectations that you have from her. <coughs> what does this one mean? This one means you should set your own, your own, <coughs> you should set your own expectations. And you remember in our previous lectures, we said that avoid blind following. Avoid unnecessary comparisons <coughs> whereby you want your family to be at the same level with others. And therefore, if they, you have seen the way how the wife of the neighbor is completing or is fulfilling her obligations, you want to demand the same from your wife. It can't be. You might be looking at that brighter side, but if you sit with the neighbor and he tells you what he passes through, you can say, Alhamdulillah, mine is better. So in this case, Avoid comparison. Set your own standards. So that in case of misunderstandings, you are going to resolve them in line with what have been the expectations. You all know that happiness in marriage has little to do with how much wealth that you have. You might find a family living in a modest house, a very humble one, but the people in that house are so happy. And you might find another family living in a mansion that every person who is passing by says, Masha Allah, Ya laita lana utina mithla ma uti ya karun. All of us like, I wish I had like the same mansion. But you can't imagine the hell in that mansion. So what do we mean from here? What we mean here is that Please be contented with what you have and set the standards so that 
should there be any misunderstandings, you are looking at these misunderstandings vis-a-vis -vis the expectations that uh, you set. Having said that, let us now go to the ABC of the husband's approach. That has been an introduction. <coughs> As we try to understand the husband's approach, having appreciated that the husband is the leader of the family, and therefore the leader should always seek the best approach to resolve the conflict that might erupt in that, in that setting, this is the ABC. And before we start this ABC, you remember that we have talked about it, that is chapter 4, verse 34, which starts by saying, And those of your women whom you fear, disobedience, disloyalty. What are we supposed to do? First of all, we need to appreciate that Islam chose the most civilized approach. <coughs> this approach that we are going to talk about, it is the most civilized Allah chose it for us because he knows that we are handling adults. It means that if I am the driver of this approach, the receiver of the approach should also receive it with that kind of expected maturity. Otherwise, if we don't have that, then we shall not have the best management of this conflict. <coughs> this approach was set please you should know this this approach was chosen for only those people who value the marital institution that's the point of emphasis you know sometimes you are in an organization and one person is not even concerned whether it's it breaks down or it doesn't so you can't talk about conflict management so this approach was chosen for that husband for that wife who values the marital institution. Because you entered into this institution with your choice, with your consent. So the great assumption is that you are so much interested in its existence, in its continuity. Once you have that one in mind, not the mind of someone who says, if it fails, I'm going away. If that is the mind, then this approach is not going to help you. <coughs> Another point of concern before we start the ABC. Please understand the sanctity of the marital institution, as we have emphasized. Number two, Allah has given us the limits. We need to keep the management of this conflict within a certain limit. Another point of concern, keep it secret. We are going to look at it. But I wanted to prepare your minds <coughs> on this. Keep it secret. Among the issues that should attract your attention, that marital conflict should be settled in such a secret manner as much as possible. Among the measures Allah says, there is something that I want my audience to appreciate here. Allah says that in case of conflict, you know, separate beds. Separate from them in beds. <clears throat> you know, we have seen situations whereby just a minor conflict, it is just aired out. So among the issues that we must put into consideration is that please keep it intact. Keep it within. And this takes us now to step number one. <coughs> the first step on the side of a husband, by the way, walati takhafuna nishuzahun. And <coughs> from those of your women that you fear, mind the language of the Quran, you are not talking about a woman who has disobeyed. We are talking about some signals of disobedience. It is different from handling the conflict when there is already a clear and manifest disobedience. It is different from 
seeing some signs. And you know the time we have spent together, you could know that there is something wrong. Unless if actually you don't appreciate, you don't know your spouse. When I go back home, I don't need my wife to speak. I can just read her face and know there is a problem. She can just say and say, mm, today my husband must be having a problem. So look at the approach of Islam. Before a clear action of disobedience had taken place, it's just a fear. It's just a worry. Compare that with the ayah which prohibited zina. Don't come nearer. It didn't say don't commit adultery. Don't come nearer. The problem is that we behave in families as if we are blind. You have seen all the signals, all the writings on the wall, but you ignore. You say, I don't mind. If you are of that type, then you don't appreciate the institution that you are in. The institution of marriage <clears throat> is so sacred that each of the partners should be scrambling to see that it is conflict-free. Two days back, I was listening to Dr. Muhammad Ratib and Nabulsi, and he was talking about how do we avoid, by the way, before we even management, how can we avoid the conflict? One of uh, his wise counsel said that you should always embrace, you should always hug, or peck, or kiss your wife not less than 10 times a day. I give husbands that challenge. How many times do you hug her? How many times do you peck? How many times do you kiss? <clears throat> As a way of building a stronger bondage. But of course, if we talk about husbands embracing and hugging, hugging their spouses, the question is, are you ready to be hugged? We have also seen those situations, ah, ah, I don't want, you know? We have also seen those, those situations. So compliance <clears throat> is also expected from that side. So going back, look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. It is just when you see any sign, it actually sends us as spouses, please read one another. Study one another. A small gesture. Sometimes back I was listening to one of the press was it a private secretary of one of the presidents <clears throat> and you know these journalists we are recording we are talking about how recording about uh, uh, her profile and he said that this is a lady who understood the president that even mere looking at the side she knows what the president wants but you know this is just a private secretary they are not related they don't sleep together. Why don't you take some time to study that person that you share the same bed together? You share the same privacy, you, you share privacy with, <clears throat> so that you could see the signs and therefore address them before, by the way, the disobedience action can become <coughs> manifest. Another point is that, you have seen some signs of disobedience, <coughs> Some signs of non-compliance, like at home, there is what we call bil ma'roof. When I go back home, I know things my wife must do when I reach home. Including just going and bringing a glass of juice or a glass of water. <coughs> I know that when I reach home or when the visitors come home, it does not take my wife more than five minutes except that she had brought anything to the visitor now when my moderator visits my home and i see her taking 10 minutes 20 minutes it is a sign <coughs> there is something wrong i know her she knows me <coughs> she knows what i do when i have just reached home she knows how i embrace my children when they come running to me at the gate so if she sees children coming and I'm trying to avoid them, that is a sign. 
So in case of that sign, <coughs> look at the civilized approach. First, talk to them. It is admonition. <coughs> it is an encouragement of the virtue of communication in families. I am so worried that communication is actually dying gradually among partners. I remember in one of our episodes when the moderator was asking that how, what is the Islamic approach to Okusirika or Usirika? <coughs> Isn't it? How can you have that length or Usirika? That length, you know, being silent, abandonment, and so on. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <coughs> Talk to them. Admonish them. These days we are hearing habits of, I blocked him on WhatsApp. <laughs> Subhanallah. I blocked him on WhatsApp. And my question is, whom did you block? You mean you blocked your husband? You mean you blocked your husband? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in case of misunderstanding, what do you do? Fa'idhuhun. You know, it is so, so dangerous, by the way, to block communication. People don't know. <coughs> when you block communication, how will you know that I have reconsidered my position? How will you know that now I have repented? That's why <coughs> it is important that you leave it open. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Faidhuhun, he is discouraging that habit of blocking communication. <coughs> that habit of cutting off talks. You know, I, we, are, you know we are in the house, by the way, we are no longer talking. Do you know what it means? Because if you block this kind of communication, what else? <coughs> you know those counselors, they always encourage people to speak. So, the first step is talk to them. What are the rules of admonition? What are the rules? <coughs> See, I'm so careful that I don't want to put a in. I don't want to stop your communication. But um, what you are explaining to us, we are now seeing what the husband should do. Yeah. I was touched when you talked of the example of the wife at home who has been taking mm -hmm. few minutes to respond when you have come. Yeah. And now she takes long to respond. Mm -hmm. And so may I say because we are now on point A, because yeah. you gave it A B C the mm -hmm. A B C of the man. Yeah. And the first one is the admonition. Yeah. Which means communication. Yeah. So this communication, if, if I conclude it by saying that it will be the communication, both the one which is practical and the inherent. Mm. The inherent in such a way that Yeah. So wanonina no kumanya ebintu Exactly. So this is what we are looking That's at. That's it. So we, we are trying to <coughs> examine Hmm. Uh, the, the, the possibility or the assignment to husbands yeah we should understand our women yes both from what they say and their actions yes and i also liked the other cutting of hugging which scholar was that the that is muhammad ratib and nabulsi okay. he was talking about conflict avoidance oh yeah that is conflict avoidance exactly so we hug at 10 times he said 10 times he says not less than Yes. So th these are issues. This is one of the areas where Israf is accepted. Oh. That you can even go beyond. Okay. 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 <coughs> so we go back now. Yeah, we go back. Actually, what we are talking about is we need to understand their verbal and non-verbal communication. Exactly. That's what I wanted. That That's I wanted it. About. And this is all coming from the perspective that let us study each other. You know? There are many things that <laughs> you are sending me into, Doctor, we but get it. no, let's not get there. <laughs> but it's about understanding one another. Mm. It's, you know the beauty of someone understanding you? You know what it means? 
Do you know that if my wife is to buy for me something, she does not have to ask for my size? You know what it means? <coughs> but if I send you to go and buy something for your wife, <laughs> you know, you will start calling some people. Then even when you reach the shop, you say, Omwaro, what size is weight I am balachi? Can you imagine? It means that you have not yet understood her. You have not yet appreciated her. So when we talk about admonition, <clears throat> what are the rules? Rule number one, before you talk, do a thorough study and investigation of the matter. It is so important. <clears throat> it's not all about communication. But what are you communicating? Once you have a thorough study, a thorough investigation of the matter, you are avoiding any situation of building an argument on mere suspicion and rumor mongering. <clears throat> Our families are having a very big challenge. There is a lot of conflict because we are just reacting to issues without any investigations. <clears throat> you know the verse in Jaa Kumfase Kumbinaba in Fatabayanu. Take some time to investigate, to study the matter. Otherwise, if you are just reacting to everything that you have been told, if you are just building things on, <clears throat> on uh, suspicion, then you know what the problem will be. Our marriages are likely to be broken because of <clears throat> just what the friends told you about your wife. And I'm even wondering, how do you really <clears throat> trust a friend at the expense of your spouse you get it <clears throat> how do you trust a friend at the expense of your spouse when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Wakat afba ba'dukum ila ba'd. <clears throat> yet you were exposed to one another so in case of anything please try first of all to study try to investigate Avoid building the argument on suspicion. <clears throat> what does Allah say? Ya ayyuhal ladhina ama jutanibu kathiran mina avvan inna ba'da vanni ithim. You know? <clears throat> Avoid just building on mere suspicions. I remember that in one of our, my khutbas, I shared with the audience a story of a man who had gone out to work somewhere outside the country and as he was coming back he found a wise man along the way and among the tips <clears throat> the wisdom tips that actually he sold it to him he said that in order for you you rather sleep on regret rather than sleeping with your hands stained with blood of human beings <clears throat> That was the statement. So this man didn't understand what it means. He had spent some good years away from the wife. <clears throat> On reaching home, he reached at night. When he reached there, you know the houses of that time. <coughs> the doors, you can just <coughs> access them even without locks. So when he went, straight to the bedroom if at all there was even a bedroom he found a man and sleeping with his wife <clears throat> sleeping with his wife what is the conclusion this wife is in adultery <coughs> and you know the nature of arabs they usually move with swords so he intended to stab them and he remembered what the wise man told him. You rather spend your night in regret rather than spending your night when your hands are stained with blood. So he controlled himself and said, I will look at it in the morning. Actually, he left the home and went and slept somewhere. <clears throat> Early in the morning, he went to the station where people gather. And when people saw him, this man had spent more than 20 years away from home. He had gone there for greener pastures. So people were like, oh, <clears throat> you are back home? You are highly welcome. 
Can you imagine that your son now is a big man? Forgetting that by the time he left, he left this woman when she was pregnant and the pregnant has just set in. So the woman gives birth <clears throat> and this child grows up to 20 years and this boy is sleeping with the mother. So you can just imagine when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in ja'akum fasikum binaba'in fatabayyanu. Take some time off. Study the matter. <clears throat> Investigate it. Find out the best way of uh, approaching it. So when we are looking at the rules of admonition, <clears throat> rule number one, as we said, study the matter. Rule number two, <clears throat> personal assessment. Personal assessment is about, you know, look at yourself first. Many times the blames that we cast on others, actually, we are the causes of those blames. Remember that this is the, the, the what? <clears throat> the approach of the husband. So the approach of the husband of the first step, admonish them. Talk to them <clears throat> in case of a misunderstanding. The second rule of admonition is personal assessment, personal evaluation. I'm very sorry the, the, to the audience. Uh, <coughs> the doctor's voice is not uh, mm -hmm. that fine. The, 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 the rule of ABC, which mm -hmm. we are looking at, you are relating it to verse, you are trying us to harmonize for us verse 34. Mm. Surah 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 Mm. where you, you actually examine how Allah's uh, actually how Allah brought the duties and the warnings and the solutions <laughs> all in the same kind of angle. Mm. Now the, the talking you are providing for us the solution that we should enhance communication. Mm. As we are talking to them, you are also telling us to understand them. Yeah. And now, after talking to them and understanding them, mm. we come and we understand ourselves. True. So not us first understanding <coughs> ourselves. Mm. It is us first understanding them. Mm. I don't know whether you understand. <laughs> mm. I'm speaking, of course, in this, in this dialogue <coughs> on behalf of the men. Mm. Because Dr. Afiz is decided to be on the side of okay. the women. Okay. Now, uh, I don't know whether, because I want my followers and those who have just joined in mm. to follow with us, that we are now appreciating that I've understood my spouse, I know how to talk to her, I've mm. engaged a communication bubble with yeah. her, mm. now I've understood her. Mm. Now this assessment which you are going to discuss for us mm. is the assessment of myself. True. I, I, I agree with you that there is now an issue you have sensed that maybe there is some sign of disobedience first thing study that matter study it very well <coughs> investigate it very well and <coughs> i don't know what has happened with my voice today i'm so sorry number two is before you cast the blame on her get back to yourself we are on the rules of communicating to her in other words what i'm trying to say is that try to look onto your side have you been an angel before you categorize her as satan maybe that is the best way of bringing it out <clears throat> don't you think that <clears throat> this disobedience is as a result of uh, your shortcomings so try to assess yourself. In many cases, when we go to preach to people, you know, it's better for the preacher to come out clean. You know, that is one. Another issue is that <clears throat> this very scholar whom I always keep referring to, Anabulsi, you know, there has been some information which saturated that actually he died. <clears throat> I think I heard it yesterday. And this morning, I got a clip that Alhamdulillah is still alive. 
So one of the journalists was interviewing him and saying, Masha Allah, we are so happy that you are alive. There has been many things, <clears throat> many people saying that, you know, you have, uh, you have died. Actually, I was just coming from uh, Algeria. But he said, the issue of uh, going around saying that I'm dead, it's, it is not a big deal. Death is predetermined. Allah knows when I shall get out of this material world. But he made a statement that it was very catching on my side. The statement goes in Arabic. إِذَا عَلِمَ اللَّهُ مِنْ عَبْدٍ مِنْ عَبِيدِهِ تَطْبِيقًا بِمَا يَقُولُ وَإِخْلَاصًا فِي مَا يَقُولُ كَتَبَ لَهُ الْقُبُولُ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows from his servant that he practices what he says, and is sincere in what he's saying, Allah writes for him acceptance. You know? Just imagine the beauty of that statement. I, I, I think I should repeat. He said, إِذَا عَلِمَ اللَّهُ مِنْ عَبْدٍ مِنْ عَبِيدِهِ When Allah knows from any of his servant, male or female, تَطْبِيقًا بِمَا يَقُولُ that he practices what he says. Wa ikhlaswan fi ma yaqul. And he is sincere in what he is saying. Katab Allahu lahu al-qabool. Allah writes for him acceptance. <coughs> and that is the challenge. You want to emphasize a mistake on the side of your wife. But you are not looking at yourself. That's why among the rules of talking to her. Having identified that actually there is a cause of alarm, get back to yourself. <clears throat> you know, that is the approach. The third rule, set the objective for the communication, for the admonition. <clears throat> what is the objective? Setting the objective shall help us to keep within the limits. Because in many cases when you talk about objectives... You are also talking about the outcome. Isn't it? So in many times when you are setting that objective, you have also set or identified the outcome. Therefore, try to move within, the, within those limits. What is this going to help us? It is going to help us not to transgress in the conflict. And this is one of the signs of hypocrisy. You know, among the signs, the Prophet said, Ida khaswama fajr. When he's having a conflict, he transgresses. If there is a particular issue that has led to disobedience, keep within that. That is another rule. The third rule, of course, is set the best time and venue for addressing it. Set the best time. Not every time is good for talking. Not every location is good for talking. That is why wise men sometimes actually organize an outing. You know? So that she's in such a comfortable situation, a comfortable environment. She's happy. That's when he says that, Mama Abdullah, you remember the other time? This thing, I didn't perceive it in such and such a way. And because she's calm, she's comfortable, she's even now free to talk to you. She's now free to tell you, what, why did she do that? So it's about setting the best time, the best location. Can you imagine that you're having a misunderstanding? You find her in the kitchen. Even some smoke had already entered into her eyes. And the eyes are now, there are some tears coming out. Then you say, to Shimalide one. You know, this thing must be ended from here. You know, it cannot work. Then it also goes without saying that, focus on one issue. One of the challenges we have in resolving or in managing conflict, especially in this talk, is that you mix a lot of issues. You start by bringing the history. Then you mix with the present, 
And he said, even in future, I see you doing the same. <laughs> Subhanallah, it cannot work. You know? So f focus on one issue. And then choose the best words. You know? Choose the best word. And also, let your face be uh, such a face that is conveying the message of we want this issue to be resolved. Show some interest in the resolution of this matter rather than the situation that we happen to involve ourselves in. You want to resolve the conflict, but you start by intimidating. You know, if you don't change, it is over with me. You have blocked. You know, you have blocked the avenue for communication. So in this case, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about admonition, by the way, on each and every point we are talking about, there is a guidance of Quran, there is a guidance of the Sunnah. قول معروف ومغفرة خير من صدقة يتبعها أذى. You know, من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقل خيرا أو ليسمد. Have the best choice of the words. Select the best place among others. So we have talked about another rule, and that rule is about setting the objective. Having said that, then next is recognize our different nature. We perceive things differently. You remember even in our previous episode we talked about it. My dear, you are talking to a wife. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking about the source of her creation, he said, وَمِنْ آيَاتِي أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجَ You are talking to someone who is part of you. You are not talking to an enemy. That is why in one of my preachings I said that we have that kind of mixing. You are mixing the ayahs that you are supposed to use in jihad or, and then you are using them for da'wah. You know, you are talking about, you know, having a very strong mind, raising your voice and so on and so forth. But you are talking about a person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described that it is part of you. And even in the hadith, Allah says that it is your rib. And you know the rib was meant in such a slanted manner. When you make an attempt to straighten it once, it will break. And once you leave it, then it is always going to be remain, it is going to remain like that. So recognizing that nature, it is also very, very important. So, as you talk about this, don't forget that the Quran has even called for the general treating of the women with care and kindness. Talk about the ma'roof. The ma'roof, it is about the custom, it's about what has been known between the two of you. So, all these are guidelines when we want to use this first step, and that step is the step of uh, admonition. Finally, on this step, Sharia didn't limit the talking time. It means that continue talking, continue with the verbal engagements, as long as you could see that maybe it is going to give some desired results. Sometimes you might, might, you might require that you are going to talk to her today, and then the talking is adjourned. Maybe because of some issues that have disrupted you. Then you make an appointment. It might even require change of locations. It needs a lot of patience. That's why the Quran didn't say that talk to them for one month. Talk to them for one week. It just left it open and said, Fa'idhuhun. Talk to them. So, continue talking as long as you see that there is any light at the end of the tunnel. Continue talking as long as you see some hope. Having said that, and as I want to conclude on this, I have talked to you. I have used the best approach. What is the response from the person I'm talking to? There are two likelihoods. You know, there are those women whom you call to talk to, 
And she's like, talk. When you finish, you tell me. You know? She's not having any interest in change at all. If she's a Muganda, you get a bit of mutu engachi. Gampeo. I'm just, you know, she's just there. So what is the Sharia advice to the person I'm talking to? Remember the background we talked about that we need to appreciate that I am the one bringing the information. What about the recipient? I want to end this particular issue of admonition by saying that, Madam, you as the wife, as the husband has actually given you the honor, given you the respect, the dignity to talk to you, you should also be responsive. You should respect that. Some people actually don't respect it. Some women take it as wastage of time. Every time you are calling me, you are calling me. What is that that you are, you are telling me? First of all, I have given you the respect. Because I say it, it is the civilized way of handling an adult. You are an adult, I am an adult. I want to end this by a hadith. And this hadith is in respect to the wife I am talking to. The hadith says, the Prophet ﷺ said, Ala ukhbirukum binisaikum min ahlil jannah. It goes to women. Those ones whom we are talking to after sensing some kind of danger. The Prophet says, Should I tell you of women among us to you who shall be admitted in paradise, in jannah? I hope that every wife, every woman would now be opening the ears to find out am I one of them or not? The prophet starts mentioning categories. He says, al walud the one who is loving to her husband. You know, that is the first. I was reading a certain article, I think it was one of the preachers who said that, I wish women knew how Allah simplified their doors to Jannah. You know, so just love is making you among the people that are admitted to Jannah. What does it cost you? You get it? Ours, our Jannah as many is the Jannah of struggle. You know, going out for jihad, looking for fees, doing that. But Al-Walud, the loving one. Okay? Al the first one is Al-Walud. Al-Walud is the one who is bearing of children. So even bearing of children is a virtue. Not these women of, who produce one, two, three, then she says there are too many, then they start practicing family planning, by the way, without the knowledge of the husband. Then number two, Al-Wadud, the most loving. You know? Then this is what I wanted from the hadith. Allati idha valamat. Look here. The one who commits a wrong to her husband. The one who oppresses her husband, a volume, you know, the one who oppresses, the one who does wrong to her husband, our volumat, or oppression is done against her. The husband had oppressed her. The husband had not fulfilled his right over her. Kalat. She says, Hadihi yadi fi yadik. She says that this is my hand in your hand. La adhuka gamvan hatta tarba. I'm telling you as my husband, I'm not going to enjoy any slightest sleep, sleep until when we settle this matter. I hope we are together in that hadith. You know? The prophet starts by announcing, can I tell you the women of Jannah? Of course, he's talking about married women, loving to their husbands, prolific, meaning that they are ready to produce as many as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. The one whom, when she's the one oppressing, committing a wrong, or the wrong is committed against her, what does she say? She holds by the hand of her husband. And she says that, La adhoku gamban. I'm not going to enjoy any sleep until we settle this matter. In another riwaya, in another version, 
Because the hadith has another version. Allati idha ghadibat. When she's annoyed. Au usia ilayha. Or somebody has annoyed her. Au ghadiba zawujuha. This is what I wanted. When the, her husband is annoyed. Qalat. She says. Hadihi yadi fi yadik. My husband bring your hand. So that I can shake it. Tightly with yours, la aktahilu bigamwin. I'm not going to enjoy any sleep, hatta tarwa, until when we settle this matter. So, this is the expectation when I come to talk to you. It's not like turning away from me. It's not about I'm not ready to talk and so on and so forth. That is if you want to be among those ones to be admitted in Jannah. Hmm. First of all, <coughs> You, you, you were emphasizing the cause, mm. the cause of conflicts, that we should first look at the cause before running to the, to the management of the dispute. Mm. I, I don't know whether you agree with me from the conclusion I've derived from your discussion, mm. from the introductory bit of it, the neglect of duties mm. and the neglect of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the main source of disputes uh, I, I don't know because you have the authority to, 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 to align with me or not uh, but to me that's what I've seen and that's what I've learned uh, and it's also a similitude of what is happening uh, that some families <coughs> the spouses first become okay with each other mm. but when one tends to get away the commands of Allah mm. I don't know what is always in English yeah. I, don't, mm. I don't want to use adultery because mm. to me adultery and fornication they are the acts but there the are act. some things before people do that mm. and that's, that's what the adultery and fornication are acts mm. but they are issues before the acts mm. and to me I'm seeing as if such are the causes mm. of disputes in homes mm. and it's also today that i'm realizing that once you block communication mm. in a home mm. uh, I, I think you are constructing the road to disputes in a home i, I don't know how whether i've, I've summarized <coughs> what you you have told us well or you will have uh, to hint on them but to my collection mm. i've really seen it and and, and and i would like you to echo on the aspect of leadership because mm. you said that in the verse mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the, the, the duties and obligations and the approach of managing conflicts and you said that one one of the reasons why women are more than women is because we have the leadership role mm. but doctor this is this a leadership role given or it is mm. something you should work on because okay. sometimes we marry women and we are in a home mm. doctor i don't know which planet you are from but mm. these days leadership is about how mm. your pocket is worth mm. sometimes you don't talk when you don't have mm. so is it a given mm. or is it a derivative that it is derived from mm. something doctor we welcome you to give us a response in okay a few minutes and we close in shall Shukran. First of all, I want to start with the question of our brother who is here, who asked about the different ways of handling uh, different characters and nature of women. Mm. That some women really need to see you tough. <laughs> that is when she can comply. Mm. Uh, first of all, I don't think that there is any human being who does not appreciate the civil and calm way of resolving conflict. But of course, when you see her behaving like that, I want to confirm and affirm my statement that you need to check yourself. Who made her to reach that level? Sometimes, you know, when we are in primary, just a small mistake the muwalimu or any other teacher could give you 20 strokes 20 is the beginning 20 30 40 50. so time came 
when 50 is, it's not news. It's not something, you know? And it has been as a result of that gradual orientation. So, I don't want to believe that from the time you married this lady, all what she appreciates is being tough. Please check yourself. What has made her that until when you change your face, until when uh, you raise your voice, until when you hit, that's when she listens. It might be your fault. So you need to find out. Because the human being I know, every human being appreciates the civil, the calm way of resolving the conflict. But I also don't want to rule out that there are those characters of women. You know? There might be there. And to them, until when you show that you are a man, that's when, by the way, she can't change. <coughs> so, Islam had also addressed that. It is a gradual process. Start by what is customarily known. That an adult, in case she goes against, in case she deviates, you talk to her. That's why even in our organizations, you know we start by a verbal warning, then it becomes a written one, then you talk about the reprimand, then you talk about, I don't know, uh, suspension and so on. It's a gradual approach that Quran actually laid that down the foundation for. Another issue is, there is that concept of bil ma'aruf, the custom. When you say some women can only appreciate that you are serious by becoming tough, that might actually be their custom and tradition. That one might be their bil ma'aruf. You know, there are some women until when she raises her voice, that's when she feels that she will be heard. So if that is their bil ma'aruf, then you need to react to that situation. You need to live up to that. But when it comes to the issue of heating, that is our next episode. Because today we have just handled the first one, that is talking, admonition. فَعِذُونَ Talk to them. Then فَهُجُرُونَ فِي الْمَضَاجِعِ Then فَضْرِبُونَ Hit them. What kind of heating? What kind of beating? You know? So, inshallah, we shall handle that. But my response to your question is that let us take things gradual. You never know that maybe by just talking to her, she can listen and she can change and she can feel that actually you have respected her and she takes a very good lesson. Personally, I have tried to engage some people into talking and inshallah we shall say, how do, we engage, how do you engage her? You know, I find some students somewhere in dark corners seated in such a suspicious situation. And I remember asking one of them that, is this your sister? The young man said, it's not my sister. Then I asked him, do you have a sister? He said, I have a sister at home. Then I asked him, how do you feel when another man is found seated with your sister in such a way? I saw really this young boy becoming so humble and said, say, I'm sorry. To such a person, that message penetrated him. And that's why Islam says that, let us start by talking to them, because it is the civilized way of uh, handling that dispute. I want to agree with Brother Zaid that, inshallah, we shall emphasize the issue of uh, intensifying prayers. You know, a dua, the significance of dua in our relationships. Praying for one another, not against one another. You know, sometimes conflict is a situation whereby she wakes up for tahajjud so that you. Allah can curse you. Then she wakes up for tahajjud and says that I will report my affairs to Allah. Eh, my dear, has it reached that far? You also reach that extent of saying that I have my special duas, you will test them. We shall come to that, whether Allah <laughs> accepts them or not. You know, that is, I agree with you, and also making anger expensive, making happiness cheap, I agree with you, Brother Zaid. Brother Kajimusaka is a fresh graduate of Masters, he's among the students who graduated this time. I congratulate him. 
For how long should we study the situation? Continue studying it until you get the better results. Why are you rushing? You know, as a student, as a graduate student, you know how long has it taken you to make a research? You know, and uh, just a simple book that you are going to defend and so on and so forth. You are with your spouse. Continue giving high benefit of doubt. But at the same time, you should also gauge the situation. Sometimes you need to go speedy with some research so that you can reach a conclusion to avert and to avoid some things that can come when uh, th that can come with delay so even here sharia didn't limit <laughs> then the other issue is that how do we handle conflict from in-laws maybe we shall handle it when we go to the second step because the second step there is a verse which says that wa in khiftum shiqaqa bainihima fa ba'athu hakaman min ahlihi wa hakaman min ahliha appoint some people from her side and then people from the other side one of the reasons why we are involving now people from their side may be the source of the dispute is coming from there maybe it is the in-laws who are actually disrupting and disorganizing your family so how do we handle them but the prophet had also given us some hints on handling them the in-laws first of all are advised when you visit don't overstay you know don't overstay because overstaying actually is making the other husband start looking at some of the weaknesses and stuff. but you find some of our wives you bring the whole clan you know at your home then the man even feels you know there is a shortage of provision and so on and then at the end of the day you start discussing what takes place at your homes and so on so how do we manage them first of all we should control the best visit is the visit which is short-lived. It's the visit whereby you come, you are treated well, then you go back and people start having the way of missing you. But when you overstay your welcome and people start actually looking at your weaknesses, then you start prying into the affairs of your sister because your sister is married to me. Those are issues that are not encouraged by Islam. Hafidha Isa, uh, she's saying that how can we make the, uh, one of the spouses appreciate the value of what? Of communication. How do we do that? I think there is a lot of hikmah why this communication was given by the husband, you know, as a, uh, it is a tool by the husband. You know, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is us to communicate to them. Why are we communicating to them? We have superiority over them. We are the leaders. So if I am the leader, you have an obligation to listen to me. Of course, I understand that when it is the wife asking for an, an appointment to talk to you, as a leader, you have that kind of arrogance, isn't it? And you are proud and so on. That's why we hinted on uh, pride. We hinted on arrogance. And we even said that a husband and a wife are almost on the same footing but Allah said we have a degree above them and that degree is a degree of leadership I think the best leader is the leader who listens to the subjects is the leader who listens to the subordinates this wife is under you but if she gives you an, if, if, she, if she wants to talk to you you have an obligation to create a better environment to listen to her so how can we do that we can do that by enhancing some of the virtues of islam some of the virtues of islam include advocating for humility at tawadun, that people should uh, you know be humble and uh, even appreciating the fact that the prophet said that adin on nasiha our religion is about advising each other by emphasizing the principle of mutual consultation wa amruhum shura bainahum the matters their matters are matters of mutual consultation by even appreciating by the way that the best of the creation who is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he could listen to his wife or to his wives so who are you mr husband who are you is not listening you know there are many instances whereby the prophet was giving audience 
One time I was giving, uh, 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 you know, I remember like the hadith of Umm Zara. The hadith of Umm Zara is, recorded, is, is quoted in the most authentic books of hadith. It is even recorded in the book of Fiqh Sunnah by Sayyid Sabiq that a group of women, 11 women, they agreed to sit somewhere and each one should talk whether ill or good about her husband. So each one said, mine is doing this, the other one says, this. some of them talked good, others talked bad. Aisha was listening to them, you know, she was not among the 11, but she reported the entire discussion to the prophet. The prophet, you know, can I tell you what the 11 women said? You know, and the, uh, how do you call them? The experts of hadith say that by the prophet is listening to Aisha, and the story is long. The hadith is almost occupying more than one chapter. But the prophet is paying attention to Aisha was a clear demonstration of how the prophet was balancing between his responsibility as a public leader and as a family person. So you can't tell me that you are too busy. You are more busy than the prophet, that you have no time. So that is how people can appreciate the value of communication and listening. Another instance, remember during Sulhul Hudaybiyah, when the companions of the prophet were non-compliant, the prophet told them, please, we have been prohibited from accessing Mecca. Let us shave off and slaughter and go back. They said, no. Who restored the situation? Ba'ad Allah. Was it it Umm Salama? Who called the prophet and said, no. Just get out there, get somebody to shave off, and then they will comply. That is the virtue, that is the value of listening. And you don't have to despise or undermine any idea. So, Sister Hafiza Isa, those are some of the approaches that people need to learn. Uh, these are some of the instances that people need to understand, to appreciate. You know, I always, uh, let me end with this. When I am uh, addressing people, you know these days we are having many distractions. We are in an era of science and technology. You are in a class, people are doing this, people are doing that. But one time I told my class that even if I, I appear before a primary school child who is giving a presentation, I have a duty to pay attention to him. I know that I can learn something out of him. So once we start, you know, appreciating such, we shall also appreciate the value of uh, communication. How do we avoid being defensive? We can avoid, avoid being defensive, first of all, by appreciating the value of uh, sincerity in communication. Because I know of so those people, whenever you tell him something, he's always defending his situation. So at the end of the day, you cannot get any benefit out of it. So we can uh, avoid being defensive by appreciating the value or the virtue of uh, sincerity and uh, openness. Finally, it's about uh, leadership. And you are questioning which world do I live in? I think the challenge here is that we are confusing between carrying out some roles at home and leadership. It doesn't matter. My wife can actually be earning more than me. And she's the one who is the chief breadwinner at home. She's the one who is bankrolling the school fees and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, I am the leader. You know, at the end of the day, I am the leader. So people are confusing those things. That because you are the ones who is taking over, or the, who is uh, doing what? Managing, Managing the affairs, the, especially the financial ones. Not at all. You know, leadership is something and even provision is something else. But you also know that customarily, the one who puts the bread on the table is the one who has the last word. We understand that. But maybe my statement will be that the day our wives will appreciate that we are leaders will be their first day of liberation. You know? Because really, 
there are situations whereby whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter how rich you are, you need a father figure at home, you need the husband figure at home, and that is not just for the sake, but is a person who stands and take a decision. Allah gave us leadership by divine instruction. No one can take us, take it away from us. That's the best that I can say. I thank the audience, uh, sisters and brothers who have made it. Thank you very much. Uh, we pray to Allah to make us understand what they are teaching us. I'd like also to spare this moment to thank the brothers who are, who are, via, who are on, on, on via Zoom. Uh, brother Abdul Latif, uh, brother, Sister Habiba, uh, Brother Kajimu, uh, and, uh, Dr. Nachi Wonga Noor, among others. Thank you very much. I would like also to thank our partners, Al Hidea uh, Media. Thank you very much for doing this broadcast. I'd also like to thank the management of the Islamic University uh, for, for, for providing us with this tech support. I'd also like to thank the next media for doing our broadcasts via Salam TV. Thank you very much. Uh, we shall be uh, coming back for a uh, continuation of this episode. Inshallah next week, same time. Subhana Rabbi Karabi Laiza Tulamaya's phone. Salam Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.